All right, today we'll be taking this Subaru TDO4 13T Turbo and upgrading it into a larger 19T Turbo using the ARD Tuning Exclusive 19T Billet Conversion Wheel and this 19T Compressor Cover. This will allow us to do a direct fit 19T conversion without any machining. Tools we'll need is an inch pound torque wrench, snap ring pliers, 12 millimeter 3 8 drive and an eight millimeter quarter with a screwdriver and some Loctite. We'll also need a heat gun, but if you don't have one, typically a hair dryer can be used. So now let's start by removing our wastegate from the wastegate rod. We'll do use that with a small flat blade screwdriver and we'll pull the C-clip off of the wastegate rod. Then we'll lift the wastegate up off of it. It can be a little bit difficult, so you may have to put a little screwdriver pry on it and push upward to get that to happen. Once that's off, we'll need to go ahead and flip the turbo over so we can remove the snap ring holds the compressor cover in place. So we'll use our snap ring pliers. These can be a little sticky and a little tough. Uh, an extra hand can help, so if you've got a friend to help hold it, that can be really useful. Now with the snap ring loose, we can go ahead and get the compressor cover removed from the CHRA and the turbo as a complete assembly. To do that, we want to hold the compressor against the turbo, flip it over, then we're going to put our thumb on the shaft of the turbine and use our fingers to pull the compressor cover off the turbo nice and gently, just like that. Now to remove the compressor wheel, we're going to go ahead and rotate the compressor nut holding the turbine by its shaft on the rear of the exhaust housing with our 12 millimeter wrench. Now we're going to want to go ahead and get our snap ring out of the way. So let's pull it off and set it aside. And in this case, our nut is a reverse thread, meaning that it goes clockwise to loosen. So I want to bear that in mind as we use our wrench to loosen that compressor nut. So we'll go ahead and put our 12 millimeter in the rear, hold the turbine steady, use our eight millimeter on the nut. And by rotating it clockwise, we'll actually be loosening it. And then you can remove the nut by hand. Then once the nut is removed, you can take the compressor wheel right off. Now we're going to go ahead and fit our new 19T conversion billet wheel with a 56 millimeter exducer, which allows it to go straight onto our CHRA with no machining. Many of the 19T kits out there require machining of the CHRA, so this allows you for a plug and play. Now you'll find a lot of times the compressor wheel won't want to slide directly down on the turbine shaft, so some heat is applied. Generally it's going to get pretty hot, so it's a good idea to wear some gloves so you don't burn yourself. And using very little force, we're going to basically let gravity just pull this wheel down once it gets hot enough to open up the inner diameter to slide down a turbine shaft. This can take a few minutes. As you start rotating it, as you get close, you'll start to see the compressor actually drop down onto the shaft. And again, this can take a few minutes, so be patient. Once the compressor rotates and drops all the way down to the base of the CHRA, you're done. You can take the heat off and let it cool. Now we'll go ahead and put the nut on by putting just a little bit of a drop of Loctite on. It doesn't take much, just a little bit. And again, with the nut being reverse thread in this case, we'll be actually going counterclockwise to tighten it down. So this is where we'll use our inch pound torque wrench set at about 48 inch pounds. We'll still need to hold the turbine steady using our 3 8 ratchet and 12 millimeter and we'll use our inch pound torque wrench to torque down the 8 millimeter on the front of the compressor to make sure we make it all the way to its proper spec. This can be a little tricky, an extra hand can be helpful. We go nice and slow, watch your torque meter climb until you hit that 48 inch pounds and you're done. Now we're ready to put our compressor cover on. It's a good time to think about replacing the seal or doing a complete rebuild if the turbo's got some age on it. Let's go ahead and get our snap ring installed. Notice it's got a bevel on one side and that bevel in our orientation here is going to be pointing downward. That way we get it on correctly. So let's snap the snap ring in and I find lining up the snap ring ends with the oil inlet seems to help when it comes to reassembly. So I orient it that way. Now with the compressor cover ready to go on, we got to make sure that we line up the pin in the compressor cover with the corresponding hole in the CHRA. So as we set our compressor cover on, we're going to be very careful not to nick or ding the actual billet compressor wheel and make sure that that pin lines up. Test to make sure that it rotates freely so you know you're all right. Then hold the compressor cover on the CHRA and flip it upside down, keeping the pressure so that it maintains its lock into the CHRA itself. Now getting the snap ring installed can be a little bit tricky and it can be helpful if you have a friend to help hold the turbo for you. 
but make sure you have a good solid grip on the snap ring, compress it all the way, and then get it to drop down inside the compressor cover. You may have to press on the back a little bit to really get the back part to drop in. It can be a little challenging, but once you get it to drop in, double check, make sure all the way around the perimeter the snap ring is engaged into the compressor cover and it's sitting flush in. And then also check to make sure your compressor reel still spins freely. Now that we've got that done, we'll need to go ahead and swap over our wastegate actuator from our original cover. We'll have to pull off the two 12 millimeter bolts and then the small vacuum line that attaches it. Now the vacuum line is usually pretty old, so it's a good idea to think about replacing it at this time. Once you have your two bolts off, go ahead and remove the compressor cover from the wastegate actuator, remove the rubber line from the compressor cover, and then you can set the compressor cover aside as uh, we won't be reusing it, of course. Now we've got our wastegate actuator ready to go on to our upgraded turbo, and we'll go ahead and install the two bolts again. We'll get the forward bolt installed, then the rearward bolt installed. The forward bolt's easy enough to access with your 3 8 ratchet with a 12 millimeter, but you may find the rear bolt's a little bit tight to get to, uh, and it may be easier to use an actual wrench or a ratcheting wrench. All right, now our wastegate's tight. Let's go ahead and put our rubber hose back onto our discharge port on the compressor cover. Again, it's a good time to think about replacing this if the rubber's a little bit older on the weak side. Setting up the wastegate's easy enough. We're simply going to put it back in its original orientation. However, you may find shortening the wastegate rod a little bit to put a little pretension on can help with mid-range and low-end spooling. Ultimately, this is up to you and your tuner, so you want to talk to them about what they prefer the wastegate pretension be set at. We're going to go ahead and keep ours where it was at the stock setting and we're going to push our clip back into place so that uh, that'll be maintained on there properly when we go to put it back into the car and that's all it takes you just upgraded your 13t into a 19t now anytime you open up a turbo and take it apart it's our position that you should rebalance it however many folks don't they'll just simply install the billet wheels it comes pre-balanced and put it in the car and away they go and most have pretty good success now the reason you can get away with that in some cases is that the turbine wheel represents about 80% of the total rotational mass of the two. If the turbine wheel's in good shape before, likely it's going to be in good shape afterward, and adding on a billet compressor wheel that's already pre-balanced shouldn't upset the balance too much. But again, it's our standpoint that anytime you open up the turbo, it's a good idea to go ahead and have it professionally rebalanced. The 19T billet conversion wheel is an exclusive product for us here at ARD Tuning, and we're really excited about it. It works really well in a lot of the Volvo turbos we do, and the Subaru as well as they both share that same TDO4 chassis. Now, with that said, the 56 millimeter exducer of the 19T matches the exducer of the 13T, which makes it a direct drop-in. Now, originally the 19T had a 58 millimeter exducer and was a little bit larger. So again, the exducer is this outer diameter here, while the inducer is this diameter here. And you might ask, well, the larger inducer, is that really that much of a gain? And it really is, if we understand how the inducer and exducer work together. The exducer has more to do with the total pressure ratio, or PSI, that the turbo can develop, while the inducer is more about its flow. So that one millimeter on the radius that we lose by going to the 56 as opposed to the natural 58 that the 19T came in has very little impact to our overall power production, and we're still seeing turbos put out significant numbers. So if you're looking for an easy way to upgrade your turbo without incurring a huge expense or a whole lot of complexity, the 19T conversion is a great option.